This video is sponsored by Squarespace. It's here, the Wacom Cintiq Pro 16. This is Wacom's new generation of pen displays, and I'm excited to check this out, so let's dive in. Hello, my name is Brad, and I review tech for creative professionals, a Wacom tablet. This feels like a rare treat. Wacom's last Cintiq Pro 16 came out way back in 2016. It was so long ago that I didn't review it because I was a little baby channel. I wasn't really reviewing stuff on a regular basis back then. Other tablet makers keep an annual release schedule for the most part. The reason why Wacom hasn't released a new version of this display tablet until now is that they pretty much nailed it with the last iteration. And as we just run down those core specs of this pen display, they're not that much different than the last one. You've got a full 4K display. It's a 15.6 inch display with a resolution of 3,840 pixels by 2,160 pixels, and it's running at 60 hertz. It's also fully laminated, has like an etched glass coating on it. This is an IPS display with 98% Adobe RGB. And to add to it, this is still a multi-touch display tablet as well. So you can pinch and zoom or use two fingers to pan around and all that fun stuff. Now the palm rejection on this display has been really good. And, and this has always been my main criticism of Wacom's tablets and their tech in general, at least on the PC. It's not quite as good on the Mac. It does feel like it has improved. I did notice more false touches with my palm when I was using this on the Mac in Photoshop than I did on the PC. Along the top of the device, you're gonna find a physical button that allows you to toggle on and off the touch features. This isn't new. This is something the last version of the Cintiq Pros had as well. On the 24 inch that I used quite a bit a few years back, I pretty much kept touch off all the time. It really got in my way. It was always leaving marks or I was accidentally selecting the wrong layer by just resting my palm on the screen. I did not like it at all. Now the display itself looks good. But we do live in an age of amazing screens. With AMOLED displays on Samsung's tablets, we have OLED displays on a lot of laptops. Apple has mini LED displays on a lot of their products. This is an IPS display. It's older tech and it's it's just fine. It's not great, it's not amazing, it th gets the job done. Maybe it's the coating on top, maybe it's that the brightness doesn't pop as much as some of the high-end displays I'm used to using. I'm also plugging this into a lot of newer laptops. The newer MacBook Pro, this Dell XPS I have here and here has a beautiful 4K display. And when it's sitting next to any other displays, whether it's a laptop display or an iMac or anything, it just doesn't look nearly as good. I don't usually knock this on budget displays like Huion or XP Pen. They have IPS displays as well. And the main reason for that is because you're paying significantly less for those products. I don't expect those to be super high end. Here, it would have been nice to see Wacom bump up their game a little bit just to justify that premium price tag. Let's open up this box and show you what's inside. The main thing, of course, what's on top is the pen display. I should also point out all of this packaging is environmentally friendly, so there are no plastics here. It is a little bit hard to get the box open. I struggled with that a little bit. Also unwrapping some of the little elements here and there that they package. That was a little bit harder, but I am totally down for that trade-off if it means that we're not using as much plastic. Inside the box, we also have the cables that are gonna be powering the display. There are also the cables you're going to need to hook this up. Now there's two ways to do that. The first way is the old fashioned way, which they include a USB cable and also an HDMI cable for you to do that. Or if you have a newer device that has a USB-C port that supports it, you can just do this with one cable, which is what I ended up doing. We also have the Pro Pen 2. Now this has 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity and 60 degrees of tilt. You could also pick up some of Wacom's separate accessories like the Pro Pen Slim also works with this device. So if you think this pen is a little too thick, you could always replace that. There's also a pen holder. Now this is substantial weighted. It's got this nicely finished metal base. If you open it up, there's some extra nibs in there. They've also included some felt tip nibs. I, I like that. It gives you a little bit of a different drawing feel. Feels a little bit softer on that textured screen. There's a small little instruction guide, warranty card, and a drawing glove! Wait, hold the music. It's not, it's not a drawing glove. It's just, it's just a cleaning cloth, you guys. Hey, cheer up, buddy. It's gonna be okay. Along the side of the display, you have a little bit of a loop. This is where your pen can fit nicely in there for quick storage. And along the back, there are some feet that fold out. That lets you set this up at a really nice, comfortable drawing angle. If you want to get real fancy, there are some holes already included along the back here for a VESA stand. You get one of those super fancy arms to mount this thing on. All right, let's talk about those express keys. I'm most 
other tablets, they're either on the front. Wacom in the past has put them on a little remote control so they don't have to clutter up their tablets with these. I like the remote, but it usually wasn't packed in with their lower end tablets and it was $100 more. So the inclusion of Express Keys is, is a very nice touch. I also think the positioning of them along the back is, is kind of a brilliant idea. Even though I like the idea, it has taken me a little bit of time to get used to these and I'm still, even after a few hours of using this, not 100% there yet. I always have to think before pressing the keys, maybe because they're they're kind of small and they're kind of narrow, maybe because I can't physically see them. I also think the other problem is, is that I'm usually not keeping my hand there, right there along the back. So when I need to use one of those keys, I have to think, oh, move my hand back there, find the key that I'm looking for, feel for it, and then press the button. This is probably one of those little things you just get used to over time. All right, next up, we're gonna jump over and do a quick drawing test, and I'm gonna talk about this pen. It's a wonderful pen, but before I get to that, I want to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Probably already know that Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building the ultimate website for your brand or business. But it's also one of the best ways to engage with your audience. Squarespace has member areas. This makes it easy for creators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. With member areas, you can unlock a new revenue stream for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to things like gated content, videos, online courses, or even newsletters. And you can customize all of this to fit your brand with Squarespace's best-in-class website templates. Browse the category of your business to find the perfect starting place and see how well your business is performing with Squarespace's analytics. Learn where your site visits and sales are coming from and analyze which channels are the most effective. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on top keywords and the most popular products and content. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Brad Colbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. So the thing that Wacom is known for and has always done extremely well is the pen and the quality of this pen. Uh, just playing around with it, I'm getting really good pressure on really, really light lines. You know, as I apply more pressure, that pressure curve isn't really kicking out or doing anything weird anywhere, which is exactly what I was expecting from any kind of Wacom pen. Let me go ahead and create a new layer here, and let's start drawing some other kinds of lines, like these thick lines, the type of thing that I am always looking for is a good taper. And one of the things I am noticing here is that the taper is okay. Let's uh, pinch to zoom in here a little bit. Now what I am seeing down here at the end of my lines are kind of mechanical looking tapers. And as I go around, I'm seeing this pretty much everywhere. Now this was not something I really noticed when I was, when I was drawing, but when I got in here and started like leaving fast lines, different speeds are gonna give me different kinds of tapers at the end. And so that that's kind of a bummer because that's something I've seen Hui on an XP pen actually do extremely well in recent years. Now, the other thing that I like to test is just how smooth of a line I can get when I am drawing slow angled lines. This has always been a problem for a lot of drawing tablets, but a lot of them have been getting better and better at this over the years. And this is an area I think Wacom really excels at. And as I'm drawing my lines, uh, this one's going to be very light. Let's add more pressure and do the same thing. I'm seeing beautiful lines. I'm not seeing a lot of mechanical taper. Uh, any of the imperfections I'm seeing in the line are coming from my hands. I'm not seeing just that perfect mechanical wave that you see on a lot of drawing tablets. So that's something that Wacom's always done well and has done well here. So overall, this is a very good pen. Uh, you know, I did talk about those imperfections in the tapers. If that's something that bothers you, that's something you should be aware of. But I think for the most part, when I was drawing, I didn't notice it. I only noticed it when I started looking for it. I don't think it's gonna bother that many people, but if it does bother you, it's there. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons. This is a great device. It is phenomenal to draw on, full stop. The addition of the express keys along the back, that's nice, love it. And the making the palm rejection so much better than it was on the last iteration of this tablet, huge improvement. The main con is the same con I have with most of Wacom's devices. They're great, but they're really they're really expensive. I would love to see more at this price point. I would love to see them score a better display. I would love to see them maybe pack in the Express Key remote or maybe find a way to get this price down a little, maybe around like the $1,200 price point. Then I would look at something like this and say, okay, if you really want the Wacom brand name paying two or $300 more, 
yeah, that, that's worth it. Now last year, XP Pen released a 16 inch display. It had 4K, it had touch capabilities, and spec for spec, it pretty much matched this Wacom tablet. Huion has something similar. They don't have the multi-touch features that XP Pen has, but otherwise you still have the 4K, you still have a lot of the same features. Now both of those are coming in around the $900-ish price range. So that's about $600 cheaper than what we have here. And I guess that's the thing I, I grapple with with all Wacom's products. What exactly am I getting for that $600? The pen, it's better, uh, arguably better, but it's not like $600 better. And overall, this is a very nice pen display. And if you love Wacom's product, you value their brand, and you want that level of quality, I think this is it. This is a good one. I'll also say, I mentioned XP Pen and Huion just a minute ago, the competitors here have really caught up. In the last five years since they released their last 16 inch display, we've just seen this like incremental upgrade that Huion and XP Pen and some of the other competitors out there have done. And even though there are improvements here, it feels kind of like they're standing still. And I wouldn't be surprised if it takes another four or five years to get another iteration of this display out there if we see the competitors in the meantime be able to leapfrog this in terms of quality. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments section. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.